hey everyone, this lesson is on leprosy, or otherwise known as Hansen's disease. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about what causes leprosy. We're also going to talk about who's at risk for leprosy. We're also going to discuss subtypes of this condition, the signs and symptoms of this condition. We're also going to talk about how we can diagnose and how we can treat it. So leprosy is an infectious disease caused by obligate intracellular bacteria, mycobacterium leprae, and mycobacterium lepromatosis. They're both acid-fast bacilli, and both of these bacteria are different. They cause slightly different presentations of leprosy, but they're essentially the same. So we essentially call these both causes of the same condition, leprosy or Hansen's disease. Now, transmission of leprosy can occur in two ways. The first can be from untreated and infected patients, nasal secretions, and skin lesions. And the second is actually contact with armadillos of the species Decipus novemcinctis, or the nine-banded armadillo. And this nine-banded armadillo is essentially a host carrier for the bacteria that cause a leprosy. Now, the risk factors for leprosy include the following. First, it can be close contact. This makes sense. So if you're close contact with someone that's untreated, you get exposed to their nasal secretions, their skin lesions, you can become infected with leprosy. The second is your age. And generally, it's interesting that leprosy has a bimodal effect. And when we say bimodal, we mean it actually has a couple of age groups that have the highest prevalence or the highest risk of getting leprosy. These include ages between uh, 5 and 15 and older than 30 years of age. So anybody very young and anybody in you know late teens and 20s are at a lower risk of actually contracting leprosy. The third is genetics. So what has been shown is that variants in NOD2 gene, which is involved in innate immunity, have some risk of uh, getting leprosy. So some variants of NOD2 gene have an increased risk of contracting leprosy. And the fourth is immunosuppression. And this makes sense as well. So if you're immunocompromised, you're at a higher risk of contracting any kind of illness or disease. So leprosy is one of them. So generally speaking, patients who are on chemotherapy and patients who are HIV positive or any other immune suppression that might increase your risk of contracting any kind of infectious process is going to increase your risk for leprosy as well. Now, the pathogenesis of leprosy involves this bacterium, mycobacterium leprae or mycobacterium lepromatosis invading through the epithelium and into peripheral nerves. That's essentially the pathogenesis. Again, we mentioned before, these bacteria are obligate intracellular parasites that live within macrophages or your essentially your innate immune system cells. So in this image you can see here, some of them are actually right inside the cell itself. The bacteria that cause leprosy are actually slow growing organisms. And generally speaking, they only multiply every 12.5 days. And what's really interesting about the bacteria that cause leprosy is that they grow most efficiently and fastest at temperatures slightly below basal body temperatures, so temperatures between 27 and 33 degrees Celsius. And this is actually the reason why we see leprosy present the way it does. It actually affects the coolest parts of the body the most, and this includes the skin, the eyes, the nose, and the mucous membranes of the respiratory tract, so the larynx. So if you were to take a deep breath, you can get that cool air into your larynx, and then the cool air wherever it exposes is going to be most affected by leprosy. So as you can see in this image here, this individual has nodules on their eye, eyebrows, around their cheeks, uh, their chin, and on their ears. So anywhere that it's exposed, that it's coolest, and you can also see it on their nose as well. So what's important to recognize though with leprosy is that most individuals do not become infected after exposure. But when they do become infected, it causes a chronic granulomatous disease. So again, most individuals after being exposed do not become infected. It's usually a prolonged close contact. But when they do become infected, they cause a chronic granulomatous disease. So there are three subtypes I want you to know. The first one is what we call posse bacillary uh, or tuberculoid leprosy. And this is what we describe as five or less hypoesthetic hypopigmented lesions. So five or less hypopigmented lesions. 
These lesions are generally well-defined and are dry. And nerve involvement in possibacillary leprosy occurs early on in the presentation, and it leads to an enlarged peripheral nerves and neuropathic pain. And there's also something we describe as single lesion possibacillary. So as its name implies, it only has one lesion. So again, possibacillary leprosy has five or less hypopigmented, well-defined, dry lesions with early nerve involvement, and you might have just a single lesion, and we call that single lesion possibacillary. Another subtype of leprosy is multibacillary or lepromatous leprosy. It has six or more symmetrical lesions, and it has what we describe as leonine facies. So you have facial nodules, you have loss of the eyebrows, you have thickened pinna, and the nerve involvement in the multibacillary leprosy occurs later on in the presentation. It's a more insidious onset. So again, multibacillary, six or more symmetrical lesions. We have leonine facies where you get the facial nodules like we looked at in that picture earlier on in the lesson. And then you have a late presentation of nerve involvement. And then there's this third subtype, what is called borderline leprosy. It's essentially just a mixed presentation of possibacillary and multibacillary. So you might have, you know, um, five or so lesions that are maybe a little bit more hyperpigmented. So they're not, doesn't quite fit with a possibacillary, doesn't quite fit with a multibacillary. So we call it a borderline leprosy. So we're now going to look at a bit more in detail with regards to possibacillary uh, borderline and multibacillary leprosy. So with again with possibacillary leprosy you're going to see hypopigmented lesions. So you can see here the central clearing is hypopigmented compared to the surrounding skin. You can see it's a well-defined lesion and you can see that it's dry. And remember it's about five or less hypopigmented skin lesions in the possibacillary leprosy. The next one is borderline leprosy. So again, you can see that it looks like it's hypopigmented, like the central clearing here looks hypopigmented compared to the rest of the skin, but there's this extra surrounding border that's quite expansive and hyperpigmented. So it doesn't quite fit with a possibacillary, but it doesn't quite fit with a multibacillary leprosy either. And with multibacillary leprosy, again, there's six or more skin lesions and you will see what we call leonine facies. Again, so we see these nodules on the eyebrow, the loss of the eyebrows here. You can see that the nose becomes uh, deformed, and you can see these nodules on the chin and the ears as well, so thickening of the pinna of the ears. So this all describes a multibacillary leprosy. So what are some of the other manifestations and complications of leprosy? One of the biggest ones is neuropathy. We mentioned this several times earlier that nerves are involved. Leprosy bacteria like to infect the nerves and this leads to sensory loss and because you get sensory loss you can lead to an increased risk of amputations so if you don't have good sensations in your fingers and your toes and you get them you get damage or injury or infections you may require amputations you can see in this image here this uh, patient here has some amputated fingers now another complication is ophthalmic injury. We talked about leprosy bacteria liking cooler areas of the body and the eyes are one of those cooler areas and the ophthalmic injury actually is due to eye musculature weakening. So this can be due to some of the neuropathy, it can be due to the infection in the eyes itself and it can lead to drying of the eyes, corneal abrasions. You want to assess the patient's ability to close their eyes completely because their ability to move their eyelids can be affected with leprosy. And another complication of leprosy is immunologic reactions. These can include fatigue, fever, arthritis, neuritis, and iritis. There are two types of immunologic reactions. Type 1 occurs in borderline leprosy patients, and type 2 is referred to as erythema nodosum leprosum, and it occurs in lepromatous disease. And type 2 leads to a sudden eruption of multiple painful nodules. So essentially, both of these types of immunologic reactions essentially makes the presentation of leprosy worse. With type 1, you're going to see a worsening of the skin lesions. They're going to become uh, more exacerbated. And in type 2, you're going to have a worsening or sudden eruption of even more multiple painful nodules. So how do we make the diagnosis and how do we treat leprosy? The diagnosis of leprosy involves biopsy of the skin lesion. And what you're going to do is you're going to do AFB or acid fast bacilli staining. Again, Mycobacterium leprae and Mycobacterium lepromatosis are 
acid fast bacilli. So you want to do AFB staining. You can also do PCR, so you can look at genetics to ensure that this is actually those types of bacteria. And you can also do histology to look at the bacteria. And treatment of leprosy is determined by the subtypes of leprosy we talked about earlier. The first one we're going to look at is single lesion posibacillary, which is the least severe form. And this involves using a single dose of rifampin, ofloxacin, and minocycline. So you can think of ROM or ROM. The next is posibacillary, so it's a bit more severe, more than one lesion. And what we do is we actually still use rifampin, but we want to add dapsone to it. So dapsone daily and rifampin monthly for six months. So that's how you treat posibacillary. And for multibacillary, you can think of multibacillary as the most severe case of leprosy. You essentially keep dapsone and rifampin and you add clofazamine. So dapsone daily, rifampin monthly, and clofazamine monthly for 12 months. And then additionally, you add low dose clofazamine daily for 12 months as well. So as you can see with all these treatments you have rifampin. So rifampin is always involved in the treatment. With a single lesion posibacillary you use rifampin, ofloxacin, and minocycline. And for posibacillary and multibacillary you use both dapsone and rifampin. And with multibacillary you actually add clofazamine. And multibacillary you use those for a longer duration for 12 months as opposed to posibacillary where you only use Dapsone and Rampin for six months. So if you want to learn more about other infectious diseases, please check out my infectious disease playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.